The Focal FDP line of amplifiers feature an auto-limiting technology that helps protect speakers and subwoofers and prevent excessive signal from destroying car audio system components. But these amplifiers require proper gain level adjustment. Without properly setting the gain levels on these amplifiers, overall system output will be reduced. So it's important that we follow the correct procedure. I'm Mark from the YouTube channel Car Audio Fabrication and I'm here today on behalf of Orca Design to show the correct procedure procedure for setting the gain levels on these amplifiers in order to achieve optimal performance. Now the level adjustment process is the same for all of the FDP amplifiers, but as an example in this video we're going to focus on the Mono FDP 1.900 and the multi-channel FDP 4.600. In order to adjust the gain level control we need two different tools. First of all we need a digital multimeter and then we need a dedicated distortion testing tool in this case, we're gonna use the SMD DMOR DD1, but you could also use an oscilloscope. We're using the DD1 in this video because it will allow us to easily identify distortion when this light illuminates. The most important thing to understand for using these tools, if you've set gains before, you might know about using this, but for these amplifiers, you need to use both of these tools. Not just one or the other, we need to use both. And I'm gonna show why shortly. We also need four different test tracks. I'll list them here on screen. These are the four different tracks that we're going to use in this procedure. To get started, we want our amplifier installed in the vehicle and we want all the power connections made. Before powering on our amplifier, we want to make sure that the level adjustment knob is set to its full counterclockwise or lowest position. We do not want to connect the signal coming into the amplifier yet and we do not want to attach the signal going out to the subwoofer or speakers yet. We also want to leave any of the adjustment level knobs disconnected. Connected. For the sake of making this video, this is a complete car audio system outside of the vehicle. It's powered off a car battery there, and we have a head unit and then the speakers running off the head unit. But we also have our RCA level outputs coming out from the back of the head unit, which we will use for signal to the amp. Now, although I'm showing this process using an aftermarket head unit, the process is the same for a factory head unit as well. We want to make sure that all EQ settings on the head unit and any bass boost settings, any loudness settings, that those are all disabled and set to flat. Next, we want to make sure our speakers are disconnected from the system because we're going to be playing these test tones. We are now going to test the maximum undistorted volume out of our source unit, so I'm going to connect the signal into the DD1. Since we're using an aftermarket head unit, we're going to use the RCA low-level outputs, but if you were using a factory head unit, that you could only use speaker-level outputs. In that case, you would test the high-level speaker-level outputs. The first track we want to play is our 40 hertz 0 dB track. We have a detection light turned on here, so it's detecting the signal, and we're going to go ahead and turn it up until we see that red light on top illuminate. And once it does illuminate, we're going to want to make a note of that volume position. We then repeat the process with our second test track, which is a 0 dB 1000 hertz track, which we are detecting here, and we will turn this up until we see distortion which in this case happened at level 33. Of those two different volume settings, whichever one is lower, that's the setting that we're going to want to use throughout the rest of this test while we test the amp. To test the amplifier, we need to have signal coming in so we will make those connections. We will also connect our testing devices to the speaker output of the amplifier. You'll notice that I have the DD1, which is these probes here going into the output terminals, but I also have these little jumpers that I can attach, which attach my digital multimeter. Now the first thing here that gets overlooked sometimes that is very important is we wanna make sure that our crossover is allowing a value to go by that we're going to be testing. So for a subwoofer amplifier like this, we want 40 hertz to go past, and for a mids and highs amplifier, we want 1000 hertz to go past. So in my case, this is a low pass crossover, I'm just going to turn it to its maximum value of 350 so we know everything below 350 is going past, so 40 hertz is going past, we're good to go. It is worth noting on this amplifier that even when you have this switch in the low pass position, this filter here for the high pass is still active. In other words, if we are playing a 40 hertz tone, but you have this dial turned up too high, it's not gonna let that 40 hertz tone go past. So if you're having trouble where you're not getting output out of this amplifier, you wanna pay attention to the crossover settings. Another thing you wanna check on the multi-channel amplifiers if you're not getting any output is you wanna make sure you have the 
route settings set correctly. In this example on the four channel amplifier, if we have the switch in the one plus two setting, that means that we need to have RCA connections on all four of these connections, not just two, we need all four. If we do only have two channels of input going into the amplifier, we then need to set this on three plus four, which will then route this signal not only to channels three and four on the outputs, but also one and two. But here's where you really need to be careful. When you're on either of those first two settings that I described, the crossovers that correspond with those pairs of channels control them. So in other words, if we pick one plus two or three plus four, this high pass filter will affect channels one and two, and then these two dials here affect channels three and four. But what happens is when we go to copy, now channels one and two are affected by this, this, and this. This is nice because it gives us more flexibility in our filters on the amplifier, but it is something you have to be careful of because you could set these dials in a way that would make it so that you would have no output whatsoever on the amplifier. The next thing that's very important, and I'll list them up at the top here, we want to make sure that we use the right test tracks. In this case, since this is a subwoofer amplifier, I'm using a negative 10 dB 40 hertz track, but if you were setting up an amplifier for mids and highs, you would want to use the negative 5 dB 1000 hertz track. So we've done all of our system setup. We now want to locate the level adjustment knob on the particular amplifier that we are using. In my case, it is right here, so we can now make our adjustment. First of all, I wanna make sure that my volume setting on the source unit is at that volume setting that we determined earlier. And now I wanna power on the DD1 or the oscilloscope, and I also want to set my digital multimeter to voltage AC. Now I've got everything set up in one shot so you can see everything here. And these adjustment knobs, they have a slight kind of click feel to them so you can kind of feel one position at a time. I'm actually turning the knob right now and you can see that because our voltage output coming out of that speaker output is increasing. So there's two different things we wanna watch for here. The first is we wanna watch for that distortion light to illuminate and stay on. But because these amplifiers have this advanced protection technology built in, we also wanna pay attention to our voltage. We wanna make sure that every click that we make that it does continue to rise. Because if we get to a point that we make a click up and it doesn't go up anymore, or if we see it suddenly drop off, then we are at the end of our level adjustment. It's hard to see my hand turning this knob, so you're going to have to listen to me explain, but if I go up one more click here, you can see that the voltage increases, but then it starts dropping off and we also have distortion. So that one click has put us into the mode where that this amplifier is going to protect itself and protect the speakers and other components. If I carefully go down one click, we will see that the voltage increases back to its acceptable value. We can see that the distortion goes away. So this amplifier is now fully tuned to give us optimized performance. Let's go ahead and demo that one more time, real time. I'm going to go one click up, and you can see that the voltage will start to drop off as the amplifier protects itself. We are detecting distortion as well. I'm going to go one click back again. We can see that everything levels off. This amplifier is good to go. What's awesome about this functionality is it allows the amplifiers to be really, really reliable. As an example, if we come in and let's say that somebody turned up the bass boost, which is known to destroy speakers, let's say they turned it up 2 dB, you can see that the amplifier is going to detect that. It's detecting the distortion and it's automatically rolling back the output. So it is important to educate the customer and explain that the amplifier has been professionally tuned and adjusted in order to get that optimal performance and any tweaks or adjustment that aren't necessary are going to lead to a reduction in performance. The other thing that's nice about this functionality is we know it can be difficult to tell a customer not to exceed a certain value on the radio that you've tested for maximum undistorted volume. And if they do exceed it, once again, the amplifier will help protect the speakers. With the level setting process, Complete, we can turn down the volume on our source unit, we can reconnect all of our speakers, we can connect the speakers to the amplifier, and then we can also plug in the adjustment knob. Now a few additional notes here, if we did go through and make adjustments to the EQ setting on the amplifier itself or to a digital signal processor, it is possible we would need to redo the level setting process in order to get the most performance. When you're setting the gain level for a multi-channel amplifier, there will be multiple different channel pairs that you need to adjust 
the gain for. Finally, if you're adjusting the adjustment knob clockwise and turning it up and you do detect distortion with a DD1 or an oscilloscope prior to seeing the voltage roll off, you would wanna stop there and use that setting for your level adjustment. With these steps complete, the Focal FDP amplifier is now properly set up. As the source unit is turned to its max undistorted level, the amplifier will also play at its own max undistorted level, reproducing clean, accurate sound. Once again, I'm Mark from the YouTube channel Car Audio Fabrication. On behalf of Orca Design, I'd like to say thank you for watching this video. And if you'd like to learn more about the FDP lineup of amps, visit orca at orcadesign.com.